Right, we have five kilos of Blue Mountain Gone eucalyptus leaves, which we picked from some local trees. These will be placed in our pressure cooker still, and this is the best type of still, is where the lid actually fits underneath. So you can't. What you have, what you have is a mechanism. Put this on just to show you how the still works. This slides in from the side. And that, that is the best type of pressure cooker you can use for the distillery. Because it, it, what it, what it, our pressure cooker works is normally the pressure inside the, inside the cooker helps with the seal. But in this case, there's no pressure building up because we have an outlet. So we need to apply pressure and using this type of pressure cooker works a treat. It's quite simple. You take the leaves and cram as many leaves in as you can into your pressure cooker. And from this we'll extract the eucalyptus oil. Now the Blue Mountain Gum eucalyptus oil is absolutely amazing. So again, Crunch it down as low as you can get it. Obviously the larger the pressure cooker, the easier and less work you have to do. So this is not exactly the biggest uh, pressure cooker that we can find, but you can get a lot of eucalyptus leaves in there. Just top, top them down in the edges. Like I said, the more you get in, the better. So today we'll be processing 5.5 kilos of eucalyptus oil. So you can use the water from your hot tap. And once you've filled up your pressure cooker, add as much water as you can get in, leaving a little bit from the top. So we've used a 10 millimeter copper tube which we've coiled around. But you can actually buy this copper tube. It's called microbore tube. And you can buy it already coiled. So all you would need to do then is refashion the two ends. This end goes into the uh, collecting vessel. So that will go in there. And uh, we've used a single uh, 10 millimeter US um, compression joint or, or UK compression joint. And we've placed the nut on the back with a gasket. And that, that forms actually forms a very good seal. So just take care and make sure that all of the all of the leaves are not going to interfere with the seal. So that's that's okay. Now we need to bring it up to the boil, carefully up to the boil, and then um, lower it down onto a low gas and let it bubble away. This water, this water will warm up because 
As the steam rises, the heat is transferred into the washing up bowl filled with water. That acts as a cooler, so this causes the, the oil and the, the, um, the water, the distilled water, to collect. It flows through here and comes out into our collecting vessel. And then the oil will float to the top and uh, we can use the, the fact that the oil floats to the top to separate, which I'll show you later. Once the pressure cooker has come up to the right temperature, i.e. just started to boil, this pipe will get very hot at the, at the front of the, uh, the outlet. And you can see steam starting to rise, but the outlet side of it is nice and cold. So we turn the gas right down to the lowest setting and um, we wait for this uh, build up of distillate um, in, the, in the copper tube to start percolating out through into the collecting vessel. Now, one important point is, is to use initially, until you get the hang of it, is to use a, a two litre plastic bottle now, the reason we do this, what can happen is um, we can get a lot of brown liquor coming out. What we need is nice, clean hydrosol. That's the name of the, uh, the product that comes um, separate to the oil. And uh, this eucalyptus hydrosol can be used to spray your dog bed in to keep the fleas away. And you can actually spray it onto your dog's coat when you go out for a walk. Walk across the moors, it'll keep ticks away and fleas away from out outdoors. Um, if it goes wrong and this is brown instead of nice and clear, then what we can do the next batch of hydros the next batch of um, oil we do, we can put that brown hydrosol back into the uh, into the pressure cooker and fill up with water again, and away you go again until you do get clear. So all is not lost. Um, if, however, you just use a single damage on and you've got some nice clean hydrosol there, and then you get a bad batch, you ruin the whole batch of hydrosol. So do, do each batch in a smaller bottle and then transfer it to the larger bottle. The pressure, uh, pressure cooker still is working fine now. We can see steam rising from the bowl and we can, we can feel the outlet is nice and cool. So we've just started to notice that we're starting to get the first few drips of, of oil and water. So we've got our first first bit of hydrosol and you can see the little bits of oil collecting on the surface that's eucalyptus oil in fact it smells really strong so uh, again we wait for the the water to start percolating out and having the loop of tubing this way actually works very well because it, it sort of forms a plug to stop the steam from coming straight through so it it causes a little bit of a backup and then we get the we get the outflow. and the hydrosol is nice and clear now these two collecting vessels which we've got a bucket and a mop bucket what we need to do regularly is to keep an eye on this temperature of this water it's nice and cool at the moment because we've just started the distillation but this can get quite warm so then using a jug we transfer water from here into these buckets which will then be put outside in its winter time so they'll cool down nicely while we're filling up the other buckets and then initially we'll, we'll fill up with water from the, from the cold tap but after a while because we're doing multiple batches we can recycle the water that we've got outside because all we need is the temperature change We're going to take a sample of the 
of the uh, distillate or the hydrosolin and oil. So we just wait for this to. There we go. And if you look carefully, you should be able to see the oil on the surface. So it's sticking to the sides there. And what we look for later when the when the process is coming to an end or you've completed one batch, what we'll tend to see is tiny, tiny little droplets of oil. Um, and, and then you've reached, you've really reached the, uh, the end of the process, so you need a new batch of vegetation. Quick test for the water. It's warm now, so what we'll do is we'll transfer Two scoops, two jugfuls, and then we'll replace this with the cold water. Temperature's nice and cold again. This is the, the last dregs of the oil that were taken from the tube by blowing out through the copper tube and uh, it has like a colloidal residue in the water but there's some clean oil floating on the surface and what we'll use is a syringe and we'll uh, just tilt the glass and just draw up the oil using a thumb to pull up the lever We'll just turn, just turn it over and just take the, the oil out of the tube, draw it back up. What we're trying to do is just skim the oil off the surface. So you're just sucking all the oil off the surface. Don't worry about the sediment. And that's recovered the oil. Now what we need to do is to just draw that last bit of oil into the plunger. And 
now the cleaner I will float we can add the clean oil then accurately This bottle here is an elderflower cordial bottle. It's got a long narrow neck. This is ideal for settling out the oil. And the oil we've collected is in these couple of bottles here and there's a little bit of oil um, in this bottle as well. And five, five and a half kilos of leaves and, and foliage from the Blue Mountain Gum Eucalyptus tree has produced this, this amount of oil which is not bad so what we need to do oil will always float on the surface so we'll fill the bottles up let that settle for a few minutes and we need to draw off the oil This is the total volume of oil that we've taken from five and a half kilos of leaf with a few twigs and in the, in the backdrop there's the amount of vegetation plus another one which I've already scattered on the garden and disposing of these on the garden as a mulch is a good way of keeping insects off your garden because it's a natural insect repellent. Thank you for watching the video. Hope you'll enjoy making some of this amazing oil and see my other videos, especially the videos including incline bed therapy.